It's a beautiful fall morning here on the property and today's gonna be a really good day because our roofing material is about to get dropped off. We're working with McElroy Metal. They're coming out of Winchester, Virginia, although they're headquartered in Louisiana. They supply a ton of steel for buildings all around the country and we are really happy to be working with them. Their customer service has been phenomenal. I worked with the roofer that we're gonna be hiring to do the takeoff, but I finalized all the material details on the quote myself. I think I hear it. That looks like a roofing truck. Now this is cool, they even mark what end of the sheets have a rust inhibitor on it because with metal roofs, the edge of these panels act as the drip edge, so there's constantly gonna be water dripping off the edge of that. That's pretty cool. I'm just really impressed at how well packaged this is. I mean, they thought of everything. Everything is so well labeled, neat, organized, really awesome. That's definitely not something you see with every building supply company, that's for darn sure. All right, good morning, today is the day. We are getting a roof. Nathaniel and his crew are here and they're hopefully gonna get this done in two or three days, we're gonna see. One nice thing about ordering through McElroy is they can supply the full roofing package that includes all the trims, fasteners, and accessories needed to complete the roof. The trims come with a protective plastic coating over all the painted surfaces, which I found is really handy, especially if you need to make marks for measurements or do any extra bending or cutting on the trim before you're ready to install it. We also got the rollout bench strip as part of the package. This is a netted strip that'll go under our ridge cap and it's profiled to the outside of the panel. We also use this to vent under the eave edges, which we'll show you in a little bit. The underlayment we used on this roof was GAF Stormguard. That's a fully adhered peel and stick membrane. It was a little bit more expensive using the ice and water shield over the whole roof. Probably about $1,200 versus maybe $700 if I would've used synthetic felt. But the peel and stick is much more resistant to leaking should any water get under the metal. In fact, it served as our temper for a few weeks. We decided to use one by four furring strips at two foot on center, nailed into the rafters. That is what the panels will screw into. They're installing the end wall and side wall flashing right now. For the end wall trims under the windows, Nathaniel carefully removed each screw in the window flange and tucked the trim up under the flange to make sure water sheds in the proper way. The sidewall trims were taped to the zip sheathing. Don't forget to roll the tape. Once the purlins were on, the guys were able to start moving quickly on the back roof. There was only two penetrations, just the two vent pipes. All the panels came pre-cut to length, so it was really easy just to put them up there and screw them in. The Kynar 500 paint on these panels is based on a Sherwin-Williams formula and is pretty much the best paint you can get as of now on metal roof systems. Let's talk about the fasteners we use for the roof. We're using paint match zinc alloy cap screws. These are considered a long life fastener because the metal cap actually extends over and protects the washer. Here it is compared to a traditional roofing screw. The washer can become exposed when it's tightened down and that is eventually what degrades due to the UV light. Guys are using cordless drills with clutches so we don't overdrive the screws. The guys have been here since just about 7.30 this morning and have gotten quite a lot done. The whole back of the roof's actually already on. Purlins are going in on the front. The guys started by installing the trim around the windows, the sides, and the bottom, and then the sheets of metal will go underneath that. There's also some pieces of foam that are profiled to the panel edge. They're called closure strips. Those will go up underneath the trim to seal that air gap there. That's a tricky piece right there. Had to go up and around that fascia board. That's tricky. Now can I go up? Now you can go up. Be great. 
These battery powered single cut shears seem like a non-negotiable if you're doing a lot of metal work. Guys, just rolled out. It is 4.12 in the afternoon and what a difference just about eight hours makes. There's literally just one little sliver of roof that they didn't get on and some trim work they got to do. The ridge cap still got to go on, all the snow guards. So maybe a half day's work for a couple more guys. They're going to come back tomorrow a little bit later. Here the guys are getting ready for the ridge cap and are rolling out that profile vent I talked about earlier. The idea behind the profile vent is that it lets hot air up and out of your attic through the ridge vent, but it prevents wind driven rain from getting forced up underneath your ridge cap and dripping down into the attic. The netted strip creates just enough resistance to the water to prevent that. The foam closures on the other hand are a solid foam strip with adhesive on either side. You can see Nathaniel putting them in here.